When I was in third grade, my teacher pulled me aside before recess one day to give me some uh, advice that she thought would be helpful for me. She said, you know, if you want the boys to like you, you won't be such a know-it-all in class. Because every time you raise your hand and enthusiastically yell out an answer, you're actually not allowing them to shine and it hurts their feelings. That was the first time I remember being asked to disappear because I was a girl, but it wasn't the last. When I was 10, I was one of the first two girls in the state of Maine to be on the Little League team, and uh, it was a pretty big deal. I was proud of myself. The parents of some of the boys on my team would also give me some helpful advice, and they would say things like, honey, what are you doing playing in the dirt with the boys and getting all sweaty? Don't you think that they would appreciate it if you were in the stands, kind of like cheering them on? And when I was in eighth grade, I was on the field hockey team and I went to practice one day only to discover that that day I didn't have practice, but the eighth grade boys soccer team had practice and the coach, whose name was Mr. Braun, I kid you not, <laughs> asked me if I wanted to practice with the team. And since I had a crush on half the boys on the, boy, on the soccer team, Team, I thought, awesome idea. So I did, and it was actually really fun. I was in the middle of the pack. I was feeling pretty good about myself until I heard Mr. Braun's voice from the sideline yelling, Ted, you're letting a girl beat you, and Phil, you're behind a girl. And I realized at that moment, he did not invite me to come because he thought I was an athlete that would be, you know, enjoying the workout. He invited me because I was a girl and because I represented a low bar with which that he could shame the boys into working harder. Awesome. <laughs> In my professional life, I face this sort of, you know, weird bias all the time. I had been told that I didn't get a job on a particular project because it was just known genetically men are funnier than women, and there were men that were applying for the job. I have been passed over for jobs because I'm a mom, and I was told they didn't want to put me in the pressure situation of having to choose between my family and my work. Uh, I know that men doing the same job that I I do get paid more. So these things are happening, but am I sitting here feeling sorry for myself and just like giving you a list of all the wages, the bad things that were waged against me at, because I'm a female? I'm not. And do I think that the people who have said these things to me have been trying to hurt me? I don't. I actually think a lot of these people thought they were doing me a favor. They were just responding to what they thought the social norms were in terms of gender. And they wanted me to be sure I understood how girls and women should should act in society. I just never really bought into it. But the fact that I didn't buy into it doesn't mean that it didn't hurt. And sometimes these comments and these situations and these challenges that I face, they do splinter you and turn you into an insecure puddle sometimes. So I have come up with a handful of things that I lean into every day because this does happen. These challenges are there five things that I'm going to share with you today for people who are in fields that are dominated by men and also for girls who may be looking to STEM fields and think, mm, I don't know whether I want to face that. You can. You can navigate these things with power and grace. And here are five ways that I do it. Number one, know that you belong. You are perfectly capable, even if you sometimes feel like a fraud. I don't know anybody who has not had that feeling of feeling like an imposter in the room. I remember the first time I won an Emmy for the writing I did for Bill Nye the Science Guy, even though I knew that the work I had done was good and the team that I had done it with was wonderful, and I had that statue in my hand, I was still waiting for at least two months for the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences to call me back and say, you know, we made a mistake. Can you send that statue back? Which thankfully they didn't. <laughs> I do a couple of things. I lean into my network of women, strong women who know me professionally and who know me privately. You want to find out how far I've come and what I still have to offer. That's really great strength for me. And I also reach back into my community. I might call out to a senior center or mentor a child or go into a school or teach a class or do an assembly because by reaching back to my community and offering back and giving what I am good at, I realize they do have something to offer. So those things help me buoy up when I don't feel like I quite belong. Number two, look to mentors. Look, women have been part of the story since the get-go, but we haven't gotten credit for that. But actually, we're in kind of a cool place now because some of these stories are coming more to light. Sure, we all know Marie Curie. Did you know that she won two Nobel Prizes in two aspects of chemistry? That was pretty cool. We've heard of 
Katherine Johnson think to hidden figures. She did the calculations that allowed NASA to put a human being on the planet, on the moon, and bring them back safely. So that was pretty cool. And then there's Hedy Lamarr, who was this like bombshell of a movie star in the 30s and 40s. She was gorgeous. But beyond that, she was brilliant. She just didn't get credit for that brilliance. She didn't go to Hollywood parties after work. She would go home into, she had a little laboratory in her house and she would go there and create things. She was an inventor and she was a problem solver. And the things that she created back then that she didn't get credit for early on in her lifetime have given us the basis for GPS and Wi-Fi and have allowed us to be able to communicate on our devices in a safe way. Pretty remarkable. So those are women that we've heard of, but there are a few that you might not have heard of, like Celia Payne, who in the 1920s was studying astrophysics at Oxford, but Oxford didn't believe in giving women um, degrees back then. So she came over to Harvard and she became the first person, male or female, to get a doctorate in astrophysics and became the chair of the department at Harvard. She also was the person who asked, what is dark matter? And answered it, which is a pretty big deal in astrophysics. <laughs> There's two, Yu Yu, who was a Chinese woman. She was the first person to win a, Ch a Nobel Prize in China. And she grew up in the 1950s in China, not exactly a supportive environment for women in STEM, but she still got her doctorate at Beijing University in pharmacology. And she came up with a treatment for malaria that saved millions of lives. And then there's Gracie Young, who is a computer scientist in this country and a member of the Cherokee Nation, who is fascinated with languages and wanting to stop languages from disappearing. And she's created some really cool apps to be able to connect students with native speakers so that this language revitalization can take place. Women are everywhere doing amazing things. And the moment I start feeling sorry for myself or start whirling into this, oh, am I not good enough? I just think to them and I think of the challenges that they have faced and surmounted. And I get inspired again. Number three, embrace the challenge. Sure, you can look at this unfairness because it's not going away and you can say, oh, it's a male dominated world. But you know what? Looking at it and becoming bitter is not this. It's just not a helpful way to do it. You tweak the lens. You see it as a challenge, right? It's not true. Like talent and uh, knowledge is not gender based. Everybody deserves a seat at the table and everybody deserves the voice. So yay. <laughs> Number four, take credit for your work. How many times has this happened to you? It's happened to me. I sit at a table. I come out with an idea that I think is a good idea. I don't seem to be heard. But then five minutes later, the guy next to me or the one across the table says the same thing and he's praised for his creativity. You know, it happens to me a lot, but I don't think it's necessarily a, like an intentional thing. So take credit for it. You don't have to shame anyone. I like to make a joke or just say, hey, thanks for listening. I'm glad you heard that I said that a few minutes ago. Take credit when you earn it. And the final thing, the fifth thing, be authentic. Be yourself. You know what? You get to be robustly, enthusiastically interested in whatever you are interested in. You get to love science. You get to be the kid that raises her hand. You get to be the know-it-all in class. And you know what? Boys and girls will still like you. So that's terrific. The world is full of wonder and there's much work to be done, but our challenges of women in this world are not going to disappear. But that's okay, because neither are we. Thank you. <laughs>